I've got an extremely good video for you today. We're going to be taking a look at the TLB12 Extreme. It's a fairly new fan from Thermorite. Let's get right into it. So first we got a little bit of cross comparison between other Thermorite fans. I just want to have a little bit of a cross like compilation of the th different Thermorite fans because they flooded the market with so many products that it's actually a little bit like of a mini review right there just to show how each of the fans kind of stack up against each other and I have the CFM testing, cooler testing, as well as how they do on my case simulation test. So now we're on to the specs. Uh, I suspect it's a four pole motor and I got that from Igor's lab. It's a dual wall bearing, 12 volt, 0.35 amps. So it does use a little bit on the high side for amperage, but you could still handle mm, two, maybe three on a single uh, header on your motherboard. RPM is 3,150, so that is higher than most other 3,000 RPM fans. Airflow is at 112 CFM, 5 mils of H2O, and 40 decibels. So first up in my testing is the case simulation test. This can be looked at a couple of key different ways, specifically how the airflow pattern out of the back of the fan is roughly translated, but for you, the viewers, is actually what size computer case do you plan on buying? So first up, measurement location is the six inch mark. The six inch mark is representative of a small form factor case, mini ITX, but still has a front to back airflow with an air cooler. That is one of the key with these measurements. It assumes an air cooler and a front to back airflow type design. The six inch mark is also representative of a short throw distance, like uh, blowing air from the bottom of your case up towards your GPU. Fans that do well in this category would be very good at that type of job. Then we have the 9-inch mark. The 9-inch mark is re represented by your compact towers. So think of a case that can hold a standard ATX motherboard, but no extra room in the front other than having the two fans there, and the GPU of equivalent length. So you'd be able to hold 220 millimeter class fans in the floor of that case, and they'd blow, uh, well, in terms of the length. Again, assuming that front-to-back airflow type design. Then you have the 11-inch mark. The 11-inch mark is your standard mid-tower cases. Think something that can hold your standard 360 AIO or 320 millimeter class fans, but not any room for really anything else with that front air to back airflow type design. And then at the 14.5 inch mark, we have the truly large towers like the Frac Design Torrent that can hold 340 millimeter class fans inside of them. So how does this compare? Well, I have a control fan. It's based three parts A12 5 to one part A14. I do apologize. Uh, the, uh, the graphs don't have different shaped symbols. That is something that I'm implementing in newer videos, but this is, I know technically when it's coming out is newer than some other ones that I've released that do have that changes. But the uh, presentation was made before I implemented those changes. And as this is essentially a free channel at this current time, uh, it's not worth it for me to go back and change them all over again spend hours of time doing that uh, so anyways we have the TLB 12 extreme uh, right here as this blue line we have the TLS 12 which I thought tested really quite well and then we have the regular TLB 12 and we can see that the extreme is performing better than the control fan but this could be fan to fan variance in terms of quality control that this is sort of indicating a spectrum for this type of fan or it could just be that the extreme is a better quality fan altogether it's hard to know i would need to implement more testing and that is a future growth for this channel at 100 percent pwm fan signaling well the extreme is strutting its stuff because well rpm equals more airspeed usually and it is kicking butt now a notable note the tls12 is keeping up really well at the 9, 11, and 14 inch marks. It's not too far behind. And it's outperforming my control very well. So it's definitely looking like a pretty good pick overall. And now we're taking a look at all the fans at each of their own 100% PWM fan signaling. The previous one was uh, normalized to the TLB12's maximum PWM or RPM speed. So at 100% PWM fan signaling, the TLB12 well, RPM matters and it crushes all the other fans. Just hands down, that's where we're going. So if you need extreme amounts of uh, airspeed through your CPU socket or through your computer case, it is definitely a great pick. Now, how does it compare against other fans I've tested? Well, here is the T TLB12 Extreme. 
noise normalized results at my noise normalized specified value of 11 decibels and it's towards the top of the charts now is it at the tippy top not quite but it is well up there matter of fact the tls12 is the only one kind of doing better than except for at larger cases so i mean it it might be with the best 120 millimeter, millimeter class fan for larger cases and at 100% pedum fan signaling well it crushes everybody else except for at the six and the nine inch mark where the iceberg thermal extra defeats it and they have very similar rpms if i'm completely honest so but the uh extreme or the thermal extra isn't as good at larger cases and now we have airspeed versus decibels decibels is horizontal airspeed is vertical and well there it is the tlb 12 extreme is right towards the top of the graph it's a very good fan for well its job and even at higher rpms it climbs pretty steeply so it's not just getting noisy 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 Next up, we have uh, performance through my CPU air cooler. My cooler is the Noctua U12A, thicker uh, heatsink. And the first graph, we have airspeed vertical and RPM horizontal. This is a blade efficiency graph because it's how effective the design is at pushing air through this, through this cooler. And we see that the TLB12 and the TLB12 Extreme follow very similar lines. But the B12, for whatever reason, is underperforming it ever so slightly. Actually, the S12 looks like a continuation. It's like if you had a ramped up, amped up S12, it would be right in line with the B12 Extreme. And if we take a look at the right graph here, we have noise versus that same airspeed. And the TLB12 Extreme is doing fairly well. It is over my control line. Again, that's three parts A12 x 5 to one part A14, doing a blended fan to try to get a fan that's kind of best of worst worlds and is my baseline for what I would consider a uh, good fan. And how does it do compared to everything else? Well, it's in third place or, or at the time of making this. So it's right there towards the top. You have the Unifan P28, you got the Tough Fan 12 Pro, and then you got the TLB12 Extreme. So it's definitely around other top end high class fans at 100% p fan signaling you see where it ranks and it's right there at the top amazingly it beat out the t30 in my testing while being quieter than it i never saw it quite reach its advertised maximum rpm it was a little bit on the low side since it should be at over 3100 rpm and i was only seeing around 2800 rpm so i do want to note that about this fan and now we have airspeed versus noise. And while it's not at the tippy top of the graphs, it is certainly well up there. Where over here in this bulk area is where I consider, you know, good fans to sit. It's sitting at the top end of that. And the Unifan P28 is, at time of testing, the what I consider the tippy top. Whoop. Okay, here's the fan itself. It is fundamentally the same as the TLB12 that we took a look at previous on Lee on this channel the only difference is it's maximum rpm it uses the same standard materials as the regular one so they're obviously holding up fairly well so the blades themselves are very much reminiscent of like the general typhoon a12 x5 it's just this uh, overall uh, blade design that we're seeing in a lot of uh, fans the edge distance between the blades and the housing is very small so it's got a very tight tolerance so uh, that helps with those pressure pressure scenarios and pr improving the overall efficiency of the fan itself. However, it is very close to the edge, so it may not do very well in a pool configuration. Your mileage may vary, but I would expect it to be noisier than other fans. Uh, three strut design. The struts are a little bit wide. Actually, the one for the cable looks narrower than the other ones. I need a... 
and they are triangular in shape so they as the uh, air is pushed along it's just deflected a little bit off to the side as opposed to a flat one where it's completely an obstruction so i love the triangular design and they fit right up against the edge of the frame so it allows for the maximum uh, sweep of the blade angle while minimizing the space for these thicker struts and uh, having three struts uh, allows for less chances for the blades themselves to make noise. Of course, with a fan that's spinning at over 3,000 RPM, the main noise you're going to be hearing is wind noise, or the sound of the uh, air passing the blades themselves. The inner hub is on the large side, like most modern fans, like the A12X25, just as a main example. It's got a good squared off design so you can stack the fans next to each other so that uh, you don't have any gaps or anything like that so you get maximum performance stacking these fans together and the housing themselves itself is solid so that means there's no gaps in it for air to escape around it and should seal up fairly nicely and the last testing is my cfm testing it's probably my least favorite test because it's more or less a scientific exercise it doesn't tell you any useful information for how this fan is going to perform inside of your computer case. It just tells you how much, well, volume of air it can move. So we have CFM versus RPM, and they all line up exactly the same. There's pretty much no difference. And we only see a difference once we look at it as airspeed versus decibels, where the extreme is sitting a little bit on the low side compared to my control. Let's keep moving. And when we do the noise normalized testing, comparing it against a bunch of other fans, well, it's no longer sitting at the top it's shifted down towards the middle uh, still in the upper part but not quite as high and if we jump around to 100 percent pedal fan signaling well here it's finally moved up but now the t30 is defeating it and it's right in line with being slightly better than the p12 max the new fan p28 so it's doing well in this test and if we take a look at cfm versus its noise rating in a graph form well, it's no longer at the tippy top. It's sort of in the middle, except for when you start looking at it at higher RPMs, where it's, um, I don't know how to say this, but doesn't like level out and just get significantly noisier for uh, not much improvement in air speed. So it's doing well overall there. And now everything does need to be taken into account in terms of price, and that's where the value proposition comes in. Value proposition is a very simple analysis. It's the performance I saw divided by the dollars that it cost and this is in us dollars and it was 16 dollars at the time that i purchased it in newer graphs i've actually fixed this to be a high to low again this is an older presentation so it doesn't have the implementation in it yet uh it's okay it's better than most other fans but it's not great at noise normalized values at 100 percent peter and fan signaling again it's better but it's not quite the tip tippy top the TL E12B Extreme is significantly better. The C12C and the uh, G12 are all significantly better value than it. How about at the 11 inch mark? Well, kind of the same story. Actually, at 100% pitting pants signaling, it's closer to the tippy top than we saw at the 6, but it's just not geared for this. It's not a great value for. For this particular test uh, cfm testing well once again it sits towards the top but it's not quite at the tippy top really close to the top at 100 percent but are you really going to be running these fans at 100 percent all the time and then we have performance or value through the cpu air cooler again it's above average for um noise normalized testing and at 100% it's well over average but they're just other fans that are significantly better value and I want to and that brings us to the end of the video this raw data does belong to me and my channel if you would like to use it for your own personal use you may go ahead and do so as long as it's for your own personal use if it's going to be in any sort of written journal publication anything that can make money I do ask they reference me and my channel because I'm the one that created it now the Thermorite TLB12 Extreme, I think, is a really cool fan. Um, takes the original B12, which was already a good fan, and kind of ramps it up to 11. 
It really was good as a all-rounder, as a case airflow fan, moved a lot of air, as a CPU cooler fan, moves a lot of air, wasn't too noisy, actually it was on the quieter side. Um, the price, better than many other fans that uh, actually move less air than it, but in terms of just raw value, not quite there. And um, a few hesitations, Igor's lab found some problems with it where it, the material is more fragile. I don't know if Thermorite has fixed it at the time of this filming this video. So take everything with a grain of salt, like I'm taking that with a grain of salt. It gets a soft recommendation for the amount of performance that I saw with it. So um, at that, if you've got suggestions for more fans for me to take a look at, please leave in the comment section down below. If you've got suggestions on the way my videos can be improved to make them more enjoyable to watch, please leave that in the comment section down below as well. Um, I'm welcome to that constructive criticism, but key note there is it needs to be constructive, otherwise I'm going to just ignore it. Um, other than that, uh, hitting that subscribe button goes a long way in helping this channel. And if you've got the means and the ends, and you like the kind of content I'm creating, I ask that you think about joining me on Patreon or as a YouTube member. That money really does go for a long way in helping this channel grow. I hope to acquire a number of test systems, as well as uh, building myself a noise isolating chamber, and a bunch of other things to really improve the quality of recording, creating, and gathering data, as well as making these videos. So I appreciate each and every one of you, and that have made it this far in the video and I especially thank each and every one of my Patreon and YouTube members. You guys rock. It's literally you guys that make a lot of this possible and I've acquired an, a radiator for uh, rad testing thanks to you guys. Uh, anyways, thank you very much. Have a great day and hope to see you next time here on Computer Tech and More.